Hello. I think slash hope I am live. Oh, you can see little Miss Marple here hanging out with me. Hastings is over here on the window. So we're, we're all good to go. Give it a minute to process fully here. Can put on some, some lip stuff. So that you can see that I'm not just a pure uh, white sheet here. How are you guys doing? Welcome, welcome. Hello, good evening. Glad to see you guys. It's been a couple weeks. Yes, I'm excited. We're doing some tier ranking tonight, which is like something I very much enjoy doing. And now that I figured out how to uh, how to share, we're gonna we're gonna go for it. Oh, hello, Pepper. Yes, Happy Pride Month starts today. Hello. Mara, over the long weekend, I became a convert to the Church of Murderbot. Thank you for the recommendation. Oh my goodness, all six books in three days. That is quite a binge, congratulations. Welcome, glad you're excited to be here. Hello, hello. Happy Pride, hello. Yes, it's nice to be back. Feeling a little bit better this week, so. That is a welcome change. Oh, good morning. Thank you. Yes, I enjoy the ranking. Um, I mean, this will be fun. And actually, you know what I should do? Let me, oh my gosh, do you hear that engine revving? Oh God, bless my neighbors. Okay, let me mute you real quick so that I can put this in the chat. Okay, I just put Oopsie. Okay, it's being a little bit annoying. Sorry guys, I'm trying to get it to play nice with me. Because I want to put this in the chat so that if you guys would like to rank along with me, you can. So let me see if I can get that going. Basically what we're gonna be doing tonight is slash today, depending on wherever you are, is uh, ranking subgenres, tier ranking subgenres. So I think this could be fun for you guys to play along with at home. So just one second. Okay, maybe that worked. Okay, I think you can actually see the link. So I put that in the chat. So if you would like to rank with me, you can click on that and have at it. So, um, yes, good morning, hello. I do, I love rank, I don't know, it's just fun. It's fun to force myself to make these decisions. Just got off listening to a Zoom interview with Nalini Singh. Well, I will spill the tea for you here in the chat. I will be interviewing Nalini Singh in a couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that on Changeling Cast. I'm very excited. So yeah, I don't know. 
they just they tear in and out at all hours of the night but such as you know life in a city with other humans so hello everyone have i tried to rank literary characters i fell in love with no that might be a fun one we could talk about doing that for a different live waiting for exit strategy to come in from library hold well enjoy enjoy the wait enjoy the anticipation so hello and then this is me so if you want to click you can you can post that okay good people are saying that the link is working for them that's good i have not joined clubhouse i've got i've got enough <sighs> I got enough social media sites. I don't need another one. Also, by the way, I just popped two peelies. Um, so I think I will also do a little nail painting whilst we chat. Um, so if you see me, you know, making this motion, <laughs> that's why. Um, but yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not on Clubhouse. Yes, I'm very excited. I've got a I need to listen to some of her other interviews so that I'm not asking her like the exact same things. And I also want to like try to dive in deep on her authorial intent for the side changeling series, though. If you guys watched my video essay, you know, I'm not necessarily all that interested in authorial intent, but it can be it can be fun. So why not? Um, so I'm excited to do that in a couple of weeks and for you guys to hear it. Ooh, nice. Mind to possess. Yes, I just posted Hostage to Pleasure, which is the next one. And they really are like a duology. So enjoy. If you read them together, I think they make more sense. Thank you. I'm excited. Okay, Malka's already on it. Uh, Clubhouse, I don't even really understand. It's a new social media platform um, that is like kind of everybody being live together in these rooms or something. I don't know. I do listen to this podcast called um, I See Why Am I, which is all about like internet culture. And they had an episode on it where I felt like I kind of understood what it was, but I don't know. So, okay. So with that being said, I think hopefully folks are settled in. Uh, I've got, I put the link in the chat. I'll try to remember to do that as things go on if more people join us. And I'll put the link, um, I will put the link in the description box after the fact. So let's see here. As someone who doesn't have a ton of experience with some of these subgenres, would you be able to, or do you have a video already recommending some good starters for these? Yeah, I actually have, I'll try to remember to link it too. Let's, let's make some notes for future me. Here we go. We'll post it. Okay, so I need to put link to tier list. And then I have a video. Um, God, I forget what I called it. But basically, I had like 150 different recommendations or something crazy, like pages and pages of where to start with different subgenres. So I'll link to that. Um, Cause that has a little, little smorgasbord for everyone. So um, I just did my tear and realized I love pretty much everything. That might be me, we'll see. Okay, so let's share. I'll share a Chrome tab. Oh, this is cool. Okay, sorry, I just realized they updated their UI here in a way that I think was good. Okay, can you guys see? Yes, okay, I see it on my screen, so that hopefully that means you can see it on yours. So what I did, I, so here's the thing, here was my dilemma when I was coming up with this list, is that there, as I just mentioned, I had like an entire, I had a video with like, I don't know, a hundred different sub sub genres with recommendations. We would be here all night. And while that might be fun, I do not have the, the, um, the stamina for that. So I made myself stick with 
about 20 subgenres. And I'm trying to keep them still pretty broad and not getting into tropes. So for instance, just like as a sample, um, I would consider like isolated closed circle mystery as a trope within the mystery whodunit subgenre. So I'm not gonna get into ranking tropes cause actually I already have a video tier ranking tropes. So I feel like I've already done that for one thing, but also just purely from like a, how many, um, how many <laughs> subgenres we could possibly get into. It's just like, it, it, we would, it's just too much. We would be here far too long. Um, sorry, I just realized I probably should not try to paint black on a fingernail whilst talking, but um, yeah. So I'll also, let's see, I'll link to my, to my trope ranking. Trope ranking. Look at me being a good YouTuber, making linking notes for my future self. Okay, so with that being said, okay, people are people are confirming that you can see it. I can see it on my screen too, so I think we're good. Okay, so I made some little some little icons down here of about twenty subgenres, and I have five tiers. So I'm gonna res I'm gonna do my very, very best to reserve only three slots for all time faves. It's gonna be hard, but I'm gonna make myself do it. So all time faves are my very, very, very favorite subgenres. Like, let's say if I could only read in three subgenres from now on, these would be the three. That's what I'm gonna attempt to do, we'll see. Um, really enjoy would be like, the ones that just missed that all time fave. So like, I still read widely in that subgenre. I really, really like it, but like, they're not my desert island subgenres. That was my thought process. And then I'm guessing the biggest bucket is gonna be I like it, which is like, okay, maybe this isn't my very favorite, but like, I like it. I read, I read plenty of it. It's something I enjoy. Um, so, I, you know, it's, it's enjoyable and, and I, I like it. I mean, self-explanatory, I like it. So that I'm guessing is going to be the biggest bucket. Occasionally are ones that I do like, I just don't read as much and I wouldn't consider myself to be somebody who would have, like, I don't think I would enjoy my reading very much if all I read were these genres. So like they're good, basically good as a mix in. I think that was a category I used for my trope tier ranking list. Um, like I wouldn't want to read that subgenre all the time, but I do enjoy it um, on occasion. And then hard sell are ones where basically, maybe I should have called this like not my go-to because I'll still read from it, but it's not, it's not my go-to. It's not my number one subgenre that I gravitate towards. It's not necessarily something that I, you know, really, really have a lot of on my TBR that you'll see a ton of uh, in my reviewing, etc. So that was kind of my, my thought process. And I'll go ahead and put the link back in here. Just for anybody who's joining late, if they want to, um, if they want to, join and make their own tier list. So as we go through here, I'll kind of get into some of the distinctions that I see between some of these subgenres. Um, so we'll just, and and I know not everybody's gonna agree with some of my definitions or kind of how I broke things down, but that's just, them's the breaks. It's part of, <laughs> it's part of, uh, um, you know, these distinctions are somewhat arbitrary. So different people will, um, draw them in different ways. Okay, we're just gonna start, looks like these got listed alphabetically, so we'll just go alphabetically. The first one I have is action adventure. So I think of an action adventure, like my go-to to describe this would be like the Jack Reacher books, or I don't know, I feel like Tom Clancy. So like they're a, it's a version of thriller, like basically if Indiana Jones were a book, 
like in a genre, a book genre, that's action adventure. Um, very high, like very big emphasis on plot. There's often maybe like some sort of world conspiracy or a lot of times the protagonist will work for the government or, you know, like there might be some sort of quest, but it's a version of thriller where the, the thrill um, comes from, like there's usually a lot of different set pieces. So like a lot of times there might be some globe hopping or at least like going around a city. Um, like Dan Brown's books, I kind of think of as being action adventure, that kind of thing. Um, so that's kind of how I define it. In terms of where I would put it, I'm going to say I'm somewhere between like it and occasionally, because I, I do enjoy those kinds of books, especially, um, I mean, this is very stereotypical, but like when I'm traveling, I feel like I tend to like something a little bit more plot heavy. Um, you know, something, especially if you're like on a, you know, I, I think I read all of Dan Brown stuff when I was flying between the US and Europe. Like, I feel like that's like the perfect time to read. <laughs> um, something action adventure is when you're on a long flight and you just need something to sort of help you forget the misery of sitting in a flying tube filled with other people sweating on you. Um, <laughs> that to me is where I would put, uh, that's kind of how I uh, perfect, like to consume my action adventure. So as I talk about it, I think probably occasionally is right because it's more, uh, it's not something I find myself picking up all that often just sort of day to day. It's kind of more of just like a mix in. So I should probably, I just realized I haven't been keeping up a chat. I should probably do that. Uh, let's see here. I've been listening to the Murderbot books. <laughs> referred to it as the Church of Murder Pot when discussing with my husband. He was very confused. He's not aware of our lingo. Come on. Um, that's really funny. Yeah, that would be fun, but not, not with my stamina these days. I don't think I could make, I don't think I could make it. Um, yes, I really, I agree. I really liked the latest Murder Bot book. It had a great mystery. Yeah, that's the thing is I pretty much everything listed here I like. I don't think I there's not there's none of these I dislike. It's just a question of frequency. Hi, I'm sorry I just entered the chat, but what would you classify as a subgenre? What actually is a subgenre? Um it's kind of nebulous, but basically I would describe it as um a like if you think about going to your local bookstore, you would have like the fiction and the nonfiction category. Then you might have under that like um, the mystery section. And then within the mystery section, you might have whodunits, thrillers and suspense. So that's kind of the level of categorization. We're not to the level, like all the way down to the level of tropes, which the example I gave earlier was like an isolated closed circle mystery. That would be a trope within the mystery whodunit subgenre. Um, so we're not gonna go all the way down to that level of granularity. This is more like probably high level or not high level, but like slightly more granular version of your local bookstores sorting. Hope that made some sense. Okay, we'll talk about the difference between suspense and thriller when we get there. Into what group would I put speculative fiction? This is one that gets tricky, so I broke it out. We'll, we'll get there, we'll get there. Um, okay. Uh, for action adventure, I love that in my TV shows and movies, but not necessarily in books. Yeah, that's probably true for me. I I probably watch more of it than I read it. People are saying a lot of this is occasional for them. Um, Steve Barry, yeah. 
that definitely the kind of book I'm thinking of. I thought there was something that could make flying worse, but being trapped with people in a book, I might die. Well, there you go. Different strokes for different folks. Um, not fond of action adventure, especially mixed in with romance because the main couple stops and has sex with the psychotic killers on their tails. Why? How can they think about sex? Yeah, they we call that danger boner. Um, I it's I kind of like I like a romantic suspense or a romantic action adventure. Um, but I would say again, it's probably more occasional than something I read all the time. I kind of just go with it. It's like we're you know this is the book we're in, and apparently we're gonna stop and bang, and that's just how it is. So. Um, okay, the next one is, I group these together even though they're really different. Um, they are different, and actually now that I'm looking at this, I should have just left women's fiction out. So we're just going to pretend women's fiction isn't there and just go with chiclet. I'm going to call that a hard sell. I occasionally like something that I would describe as chiclet, but um, I don't know, man. I, I just feel like I'd rather just have a straight up romance at that point, um, or just straight up general fiction. Um, I think it can often verge into sort of like a twee-ness or kind of like, kind of patronizing to women. I don't know. I should like muse more on why I like romance so much but I don't really like chiclet very much. I think sometimes it can also feel like kind of a little bit self-helpy. And while there is some self-help stuff I like, I think that sometimes chiclet can have an element to it that feels self-helpy in a way that I think isn't that great. I don't know, I'm probably not articulating that very well, but chiclet is basically, um, I would describe it as a rom-com where the rom is a subplot rather than the main plot. And it's a lot about sort of like the heroine finding herself or like self-actualization. Um, and I just don't, I just don't love it. I just don't love it. So I like romantic systems too. It's ridiculous, but that's part of what makes it fun. That's mostly how I feel sometimes though. Like I read, um, oh, I forget what it was called. This is very, what, what Sassy Cats was talking about. This was when I really felt this. I read one, I guess last year by Air, uh, Adriana Anders, where it was in Antarctica and they stopped to bang. And I'm like, how are you getting your tinder bits out in the subarctic like temperatures? What are you doing? Like who wants to have their peen out in negative 10 degree weather? Like this makes no sense. So anyway, sometimes I feel that way. Uh, anyway, okay. Um, people are saying hard sell. I like a women's fictiony romance when it's a blend, but I don't care for chiclet as much if there's no romance or very little. Yeah, like I'd rather have no romance and it be women's fiction than, yeah, than just have sort of a half-assed romance in chiclet. I don't know. I don't know. I never know the distinction between chiclet and romance. Can you give some specific ti book titles of chiclet? Um, like the stereotypical one, oh my gosh, I can see Emily Griffin, like all of those books are chiclet. Um, <sighs> Sophie Kinsella. I feel like, um, I feel like there's a lot more chiclet that is still pretty popular in the, that gets published in the UK as opposed to the US. Like I feel like in the US, there was like a time where it was hot, but it's not been as much anymore. Whereas I feel like I still see those titles getting published more in the UK. But that's just anecdotally me observing. People could definitely feel differently. Um, so those are more chiclet. Whereas romance, I mean, like the point, like romance, the main thrust 
<laughs> thrust. Um, the main, <laughs> the main thing in a romance is two or more characters getting together permanently or at least happily for now. So like the real emphasis is on the romance, not necessarily the female lead having like self actualization. Um, a lot of times things I consider romance, romance readers call chiclet. I think that this is true. Like I think that chiclet is a way to give non-romance readers a taste of romance because there almost always is a romantic subplot, but a romance like that is at least there can be two main plots and one of them be a romance and one of them not but at least one of them has to be the romance in a romance and they have to end up happily together by the end so beth thank you this is exactly how i feel about a lot of chocolate women thinking deep thoughts about their simple lives and it feels a little it feels a little paternalistic to me sometimes I don't know, but maybe that's just me projecting and maybe I've just not read good chiclet. Yes, White Out by uh, Adriana Anders. That was the book I was thinking of. Hey, Priscilla. Um, and people saying hard sell. Um, I like chiclet, especially Sophie Kinsella, because it's usually very funny since you like lighter romances rather than angstful. I thought, see, that's the thing. I think... Yeah, you would think maybe, but I think the chiclet, it's try, often trying too hard to be funny. Like that's supposed to be a part of what's doing and a lot of times it just doesn't land for me. Um, so, yeah, but I know, I mean, there's definitely a market for it. So don't definitely don't take my word as gospel here. Is there a difference between women's fiction and chiclet? Yes, there is. And I should have not included women's fiction on it because it is different. Women's fiction is more like female driven literary contemporary fiction or just contempt like general fiction. I sometimes also think of women's fiction as like quote unquote book club books. So like Sue Monk Kid is who I think of as like women's fiction. Um, yeah. If that makes sense. All these is the, that's why I'm saying some of these lines are so, I know different people would draw them um, kind of in a different place. So that's just how I perceive it. Um, yes, this is, this is a good summary, Sassy Cats, where, um, it's like young career women. It's about women's self exploration. So, um, but yeah. So those are those are my musings. And like I said, I I wish I hadn't included women's fiction on this because it really. I think I was trying to get as many things into these like twenty ish tiles as I could, but I should have just left that off because it's it's different. Classics. I'm gonna say classics. Uh, uh, between all time fave and really enjoy. I'm gonna say while my all time favorite book is a classic, I'm gonna leave it in really enjoy. And that's hard for me to say. I'm being really honest with myself. It's a really enjoy and not an all time fave. If I had been making this tiering, um, you know, 10 years ago, I think that might be different, but where Mara is in 2021, I just don't think it's quite an all time fave. Okay, wow. Moments of, of, of self-honesty <laughs> tonight in chat. I just think that while I really cherish the classics reading, I still do. Um, it's just not enough of what I read. And I guess if I'm thinking like Desert Island, 
and like what I would read to just pass the time and like entertain myself. Yeah, I think it just has to be a really, I think it has to be really enjoy, but yeah. Okay. That was hard. That was hard for me. Um, so there we go. <laughs> Hard sell, yeah. That's, hey, like I said, different strokes for different folks. Everybody enjoys different things, so. Another really enjoy. What do you consider speculative fiction to mean? Um, something that is not currently true in our world. Science fiction is speculative fiction because it's extrapolating based on what we currently have or circumstances we currently know. and taking that technology somewhere else um, or speculating about what life elsewhere might look like. Um, and fantasy has magic, so. My favorite book is also a classic, but it's not an all time fave subgenre for you either. I think it's really enjoy for me because it's too broad to be an all-time fave. But even if I dislike a classic, I enjoy thinking about why it's still around. That's pretty much exactly how I feel. Yeah. And actually, books versus movie, this is a great point. I actually kind of hate labeling classics as a genre. More often than not, the only thing classics have in common is being old. That is 100% true, and I debated if I should even consider it to be a subgenre. But I think it's, I kind of always go back to like, um, uh, how things get sorted in like a book a bookshop and i do think that classics often are seen shelved together even though they can be wildly different books and have like very little in common with each other so i think for that reason while it's not really a subgenre i think it gets it's functionally kind of treated like one that possibly could be like a whole other discussion, but I decided to just like roll with it. Do I put classic mystery in with classics? I did my tier ranking, so that tipped it to all time faves for me. I didn't. Um, no, like I'm gonna, when I think of like Agatha Christie, I'm gonna put that with mystery whodunit. But I think again, it's subjective. And again, classics, I don't really think even should be technically, it's not even really a subgenre, but I just think it does kind of get treated that way. I don't know. As you can hear in my descriptions of this, I'm highly conflicted about how to even narrow down this list of 20, but um, Cappuccino Crafts is saying it's a like it. Hey, knock it off. No, no, sir. I know. I know. Um, yeah. I had the same debate read classics. I like classics because of the, their historical significance and a lens to look at the history of the world, but you wouldn't want it on a desert island. Yeah, that's how I feel about it. I'm glad that was helpful. So I really enjoy it because classes cover way too much to lump them all together. Yeah. Okay, so that was that was a hard one, but we made it through. Contemporary romance, I'm going to put as a really enjoy because I know which flavor of romance I'm going to put in my all-time fave and it's not contemporary. <laughs> but I do like I love I mean I love contemporary romance. It's a lot of what I read. Um I think I go through phases with it. Like I get in the mood to read a specific kind of contemporary romance. Like I might get on a real kick of like, I just want to read like, you know, boss worker romance for the next two weeks. And then I'll go on like a KU binge. Um, but anyway, so for me, I'm going to call that a really enjoy because I do really enjoy it, but it's not my very favorite flavor of romance. So. I'm gonna say like it because it has too much variety, but if it's Emma, <laughs> there you go. Um, All time fave, fair enough. 
And then let's see, the next one I have is general slash contemporary. So really general slash contemporary is where mo like a lot of what are in classics and then women's fiction like really would fall in this bucket. Um, but I would also include, yeah, just like literary fiction for the most part. Um, I did break out historical fiction, I think. Didn't I? Yeah, I did. Just a second. I hear my cats being naughty. Give me one moment. Hey, they keep me on my toes. Um, but yeah, like a YA contemporary, just any any kind of thing, any any fictional book set in today, today's world. And I'm gonna say for that, that isn't a classic, because like I said, most classics really would fall in this bucket, at least at the time they were written. Um, I'm gonna call it occasionally. Like I, again, 10 years ago, I probably would have um, I probably would have had this and maybe like the really enjoy, but I just don't gravitate towards it all that much. I really don't. So, um, I have like occasional ones that I get interested in or like sometimes if I'm in a book club, that's what gets picked. So then I'll end up reading it there, but it's just not that often for me anymore. So, yeah. Favorite contemporary romance, Alien Peen. No, that's that's coming up. Alien Peen is coming in my all time faves. Um, let's see here. Yeah, that, that tends, to, yeah, exactly. Again, this is why in a second you'll see. <laughs> um, I tend to like, external conflict in my romance, so. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, just because you want something in a book does not mean you want it in real life, in real life, um, for sure. Let's see here. Okay, I think this is where we're getting to. So people are saying general contemporary is a hard sell. Some people are saying really enjoy. Hard sell for me, I read for escapism. I don't want reality. I think that's honestly probably part of it as I grow older. It's like, if I want realism, I tend to gravitate towards nonfiction. And in my fiction, I tend to be more into something pretty escapist, at least some element of it. So yeah, people are talking about escape. And then hard sci-fi. So I'm going to say hard sci-fi that does not have a romantic element, I'm going to call hard sell. Just because I do enjoy it every once in a while. And again, it's, it's really, I should have called hard sell not my go-to. Can I, can I do that? Okay, yeah, here we go. Not my go-to. Because it's not that I never would read a hard sci-fi or that I never do read a hard sci-fi, but it's just not, it's not what I gravitate towards. Um, yeah, like occasionally I'll get in the mood for it, but for the most part, if I'm having hard sci-fi, I want it with romance. And I, I actually very much like that. <laughs> so um, as we will discuss at some point. Um, general contemporary, occasional for you, hard sci-fi equals hard sell. Yeah. Like it. My kind of sci-fi. Connie Willis is someone I keep meaning to get to and just never do. Maybe I'll put her on my list for next year because I've heard great things and I, all of the synopses I've heard for her books always really intrigue me. Um... 
yeah, a lot of people are saying hard sell. Uh, I just don't know what I like in hard sci-fi. I think it's some, I like it sometimes, but I still am experimenting with different tropes. I think that's where I am too. And I really, I appreciated, um, or it was helpful for me to do that Operation Sci-Fi last year because it forced me to put some language to the things I do and don't like. Um, and I think what I've realized is that I mostly like, I guess what we would describe as soft sci-fi. Do I have that? Yeah, I do. Um, I like that a lot better for the most part. Murderbot is hard sci-fi. So like when I like it, I love it. <laughs> Like, it is possible for me to love hard sci-fi, but it's just not, that is so character-driven. I think that's really kind of where I landed with sci-fi in general, is that if it's very character-driven, I like it. By the way, I'm I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this. No, this is not doing it justice, but I'm obsessed with this topper. I've literally just stared at this all day. The one finger I had in this, it looks like mermaid. Um, sorry, I got distracted by the shiny thing. So I do, I can and do really enjoy sci-fi, hard sci-fi, but it's just not, um, I would say it's not my go-to. I did not. Would you consider hard sci-fi ones rooted in real science or just space stuff? I consider hard sci-fi, and I, again, I'm definitely not an expert, but just like, my kind of feeling about it or like my impression of it is that I think of hard sci-fi as either being something completely not on earth anymore, like in, in space, um, like on other worlds, et cetera, like that. Or if it is based in earth, I think of, um, like it's an, it's an extrapolation, like a realistic extrapolation of, of our known science. Um, and there's usually in that case, some pains given to explain how the science works. Also, there's a giant poodle. Oh, sorry. I'm like a goldfish tonight. I, I apologize. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see if you want to read romance your sci-fi crosstalk. There you go. Um, hard sell. Yay, people are reading, reading Murderbot all over the place. Yeah, I think it's nebulous, and I'm sure the fanboys will come for me. Um, because I'm sure that I have not met their gatekeeping criteria, but that's that's what it means to the best of my understanding. Oh, Connie Willis is crosstalk. Cool. <gasps> Joss, hello. Also, as a soft sci fi person, you should read Phoenix Extravagant by Yoon Ha Lee. I have not even heard of that. Hold, please. Joss has never done me dirty, so let's, let's go check this out. Yoon Lee. Oh, they wrote Nine Fox uh, Gambit. I've definitely heard of that. Interesting. I've heard that that's like a really brainy sci-fi book. I don't know if I'm smart enough for that. So, uh, okay. Let's see here. That came out last fall. Interesting. Okay. Ooh, I really like this cover. Joss, I'm going to put this in my want to read, and I'm going to say that it was recommended it, recommended it to me by you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, Priscilla, this kind of aligns with what I kind of intuitively feel, um, which is it spends a lot of time on the technical aspects. Um, found family space operas. My nail topper is um, it's fun lacquer. It's Elysium color shifting topper. It's from the fantasy collection, like fantasy, but fantasy. And it looks like a mermaid and it makes me really happy. Mm -hmm. 
Oops, sorry, I'm behind. Um, yeah. Is lighter and about a little sweeping artist. Well, that sounds lovely. Yeah, see, Hastings thinks it sounds good too. Nine Fox, Nine Fox Gambit is hard sci fi with lots of military stuff, super good, but requires big brain thinking to parse. I don't have big brain left at the end of the day. <laughs> So I don't know. Oh, uh, okay. So that's hard sci-fi. Then high fantasy is going to be my first entry into like it. And actually, I'm so surprised there's not been more of that there. I like high fantasy. I read quite a bit of it. It's something I definitely enjoy. Um, it's not necessarily something I go to immediately. Um, but I really enjoy it. And I have a lot of friends who read high fantasy. And I think especially since joining booktube, that's pushed me to read more high fantasy. Um, because like, I just enjoy talking about it with them. Uh, and for me, what I think of as high fantasy is anything that is fantasy or magically based that is not in our world at all. To me, that's high fantasy. So even though Game of Thrones isn't very magically, because there is some magic and it's in a different world, to me, that is high fantasy. Um, so I know other people would define that a little bit differently, but that's how I think of high fantasy. And then I'm also gonna put historical romance in that category of my three buckets of romance. I would say historical romance is my least read because what I like in historical romance is more narrow than the other two categories I have for romance. Um, so I do enjoy, I mean, clearly you guys know that I enjoy a historical romance, but um, it's definitely, it's not a favorite in the same way contemporary or speculative romance is for me. It's more of like a mix in. And then historical fiction. Again, if I'd been making this 10 years ago, um, this would be more of a really enjoy it. But right now I would say it's occasional. I do really like historical fiction, but I just haven't gravitated towards it very much in the last few years. I, again, wonder if I'm just like getting pickier, or like, or not pickier. I just think my tastes are like changing um, quite a bit as time goes on. So, yeah, I guess that's just the reality of it. I'm oh, sorry, I forgot to keep up the chat. High Fantasy is my first one and really enjoy. There you go. High Fantasy is probably an all-time fave because that's what I grew up reading and certain high fantasy, high fantasy series are comfort reads for me. Yeah, that's the thing. I grew up reading a lot of high fantasy, um, so it feels very nostalgic. Um, yeah, so I can definitely see that. I tried really hard to get into historical romance, but it wasn't historical enough for me. I go for historical fiction with romance plus subplots instead. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's about like suspension of disbelief. And for me, like, I just can do that with historical romance. But um, yeah, I get it. Uh, historical romance is a no for me. I hate that it's trending on booktube so much right now. Oh, interesting, is it? Yeah, I I really love a medieval historical that tends to be my favorite or like a Scottish Highlander. I like those. I'm not that big on like Regency ballroom stuff. Like I like them sometimes, but that's kind of been like traditionally where a lot of historical romance is and that's not necessarily my favorite. Um, let's see here. High fantasy is an all time fave. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, so it's sort of like a, it's what made you a reader, so it's a comfort, a comfort thing. The ranking is looking very bottom heavy so far. Oh, there you go. Oh, here's a historical fiction recommendation. 
Haven't enjoyed the high fantasy I've tried. Can I get some high fantasy series recs that aren't Lord of the Rings or GOT? It would depend on what you normally like to read because that's that's always my suggestion when you're trying to get into a new genre is to find what find a version of it that is a kind of crossover with a genre you already know you like. So like if you wanted to try high fantasy and you were a romance reader, I would suggest trying some like fantasy romance. So maybe like Radiance by Grace Draven. Um, so historical fiction is an all-time fave too if historical mysteries are included yeah and this is the other thing i didn't i didn't really parse through like how these crossover ones would go for me i was thinking of historical mystery as just going under mystery but i think it would just depend um yeah Some of my all-time favorite books are historical fiction, but it's weird. I dislike seeing anything set in World War II or later. I feel like there's just so many things set in World War II. It's just, it's hard to make it stand out. For a while, I thought I just didn't like high fantasy anymore. And then I just realized it was sword and sorcery. It's kind of funny how that works. It's like, oh, no, I actually, I like this okay. <laughs> I like it fine. Um, sorry, I'm getting a weird message so just a second Is that okay hopefully that'll fix it um can you hear my kitty crying <laughs> uh yeah no i'm not that into sword and sor sorcery or at least it's a little like it's a little harder of a sell for me and as we will talk about in just a moment, in a few moments, we'll we'll get to the fantasy that I particularly enjoy. I would like more historical romance recs from different time periods. I feel like I'm trapped in 19th century England. Um, if you're into something really fun and campy, I recommend the Lindsay Sands Highlander series because <laughs> they're so fun. Mari from My Name is Marines, she finally tried one. And she put me as the person who recommended it to her on Goodreads, and she liked it. And I was like, yes, somebody else enjoying the joy of a uh, campy Lindsay Sands. Oh, yeah, or anything by Beverly Jenkins. Yeah, that's a great point. Where would I put Rebecca Roanhorse? It depends on the book. Um, Black Sun, I would consider to be high fantasy. Uh, Trail of Lightning, I would consider to be low fantasy. So... Okay, horror, I'm gonna call that like it. Some of that is because often things that get categorized as horror, I think of as being low fantasy. And then later somebody will be like, well, really that was horror. And I'm like, oh yeah, I guess it kind of was. Like Ring Shout, that's a great example. I thought I was thinking of that as high fan or as um, low fantasy. And then it got on all these horror lists. So I tend to like horror with a more speculative element. Um, or horror that kind of straddles the line with thriller. So, yeah. Um, informational, informative nonfiction. So the way I decided, I decided to include three categories of nonfiction. Informative nonfiction, narrative nonfiction, and memoir. And that was to rather than trying to cover all the different kinds of nonfiction from like a subject matter perspective, um, cause that just, it would be impossible to narrow it down. I felt like that covered the range of the approaches to nonfiction that I see. So I feel like, I feel, <laughs> I feel like this I'm covering more bases with fewer categories. So I know that's not how it would be classified in a book sh a bookshop, but that's that's how I'm thinking about it. So purely informative nonfiction, this is like something that's trying to educate you about something pretty directly. So like for instance, um, I think it was last year I read a book called How to Give Up Plastics. Like that's informative nonfiction of like, hey, here's a step-by-step -step guide of like how you can reduce your use of plastics. So I would say, 
I'm going to put that occasionally because I really, I, a well-written, informative nonfiction book on a topic you are interested in can be very satisfying. So, and occasionally I'm in the mood for that. Is there a paranormal category? I like time travel or two timelines. Yeah, if it's a romance, I have speculative romance and I would put that under there. And then if it's not a romance, I would call that low fantasy. And I also have that, which we'll talk about next. Oh, yeah. I put horror and occasionally horror kind of scares me away, but a lot of books that are classified as horror have been fine. Yeah, horror is a very nebu. I know that there's even controversy as if as to if horror should be considered um, a genre at all. Like if it really is more of like a mood or a flavor for either fantasy or thrillers. So, and okay, here we go. So Arliss Bunny is saying Ring Shot is definitely horror, whereas Sheba's and Shelves is saying Ring Shot has magical stuff in our world, though. That's not what I. Uh, understood low fantasy that's not what i understood low fantasy to be low fantasy is how i define low fantasy is any speculative magical element in a world that is recognizably our own which i would argue is what ring shout has so there you go yeah so Um, okay, so I did informative nonfiction. Okay, finally, we're entering into um, an all-time favorite. So I would consider low fantasy to be an all-time favorite genre for me. By this, I mean things like urban fantasy, um, liminal fantasy, intrusion fantasy, like anything where it is recognizably our world, but with magic, I love. Like, it's an all-time favorite. I love that. Um, particularly urban fantasy because it often mushes that setting with a mystery plot engine. And then there's often a romance thrown in, which is like what I love. Um, so, but even if it doesn't, like I enjoy magical realism. Um, I enjoy, yeah, anyway, I like, I just, I like a, a speculative element thrown in to our world. That is one of my all time favorite things, I would say. Hey, Heather. Addie LaRue, I haven't read that, but maybe. I heard low fantasy used to refer to worlds that are not recognizably our own, but don't don't contain. Yeah, I talked about that earlier. That is how some people define it. So like, for instance, Game of Thrones is a great example. Some people define low fantasy as not recognizably our own, but there's not much magic. Um, I think, and I feel like there's enough consensus that this is, I feel good about this position for me. I think of high fantasy as anything that is not in our world is high fantasy, regardless of how much actual magic is there, as long as it's not being explained like through science. If it's being explained through some version of magic, which Game of Thrones has, I would consider that to be high fantasy, even if it's not heavy on magic. But there's there are differences of opinion, so that's just how I'm defining. So for me, urban fantasy is like the go-to example for low fantasy. This is like so off topic, but related. I have a preference for chunky books that are smaller or pocket sized. I mean, you could get a mass market of War and Peace, if I'm understanding that correctly. Um, I finished the ninth K Daniel last night. Heather, oh my gosh, you're so close. Uh, okay, 
In my opinion, horror should definitely be considered its own genre because its major aim is to scare the reader, which is not always the case in thrillers, mystery, or fantasy. Yeah, there. I can see that. Not an urban fantasy, but magical realism. Yeah, exactly. Things with ghosts or fabulism. Yeah. I always get excited when we find out that there's actually a ghost. I love that. So. Um, people are asking for a link to the tear maker. Yes, sorry, I've been trying to post it occasionally. So there you go. Okay, and then next up we have memoir. I'm gonna say memoir is a like it. Um, a well done memoir. Again, if I was making this in my early 20s, I read so many memoirs and I would say I don't read as many, but I do still read, I would say close to a memoir a month. So I would still say I, I definitely like it. Um, and yeah, I do. I, I enjoy a well done memoir. Usually there's a couple of them on my end of the year nonfiction best of list. So Okay, then we come to my, I think what I would call my all time, ooh, I don't know. I'm not gonna make myself pick one. But Mystery Whodunit is definitely an all time fave. I was gonna just call it Mystery, but I wanted to clarify that like, I'm talking the f version of Mystery where there's like a police procedural or um, a intrepid detective who is trying to figure out like Poirot basically or Miss Marple, whatever. Like, we are trying to solve this mystery. And should we just go ahead and skip to the difference between this and thriller and suspense? Okay, we'll just go ahead and skip ahead with those. Um, mystery is like, I'm trying to solve, I'm a, I'm a police detective and I'm trying to solve this case. Thriller is more, um, I'm not, it's kind, basically thriller and suspense are two sides of the same coin, but thriller, you're more in the POV of the person who's likely going to be a victim and they don't, they're not sure who's coming after them, but they are in some kind of imminent danger and threat situation. Whereas suspense, it's still that, but you know who did it. And you often are getting points of view from the person coming after our hero. Did any of that make sense? So like, I'm trying not to give things away because I'm like, I want to use examples, but I don't want to give, I don't want to blot spoil things. But like, I would think of a thriller as um, I'm living in this small town and my mom is killed. And as I'm, you know, putting away the stuff in her attic, I find, uh, I find out that she was a suspect in um, these murders 20 years ago before I was born. And now as I'm digging into that, somebody is coming after me, but it's not really like a puzzle in terms of trying to figure out who did it. Like the emphasis is not on like clues and that bit. Like it's it's suspenseful and you're worried that the protagonist might get killed. Whereas that story to make it a suspense, you would know that so-and-so is the killer and you would see them like stalking the victim. So the thrill comes from you, the audience, knowing who did it and being worried for the main character. Feel like I'm not explaining this very well, but that's kind of the difference. Like thriller has more mystery to it than suspense does, but both of them are contingent on a feeling of peril for the victim. Suspense can also verge more into the action adventure side of things. Like action adventure is really kind of a version of a suspense book. Um, because there's less actual mystery involved. I hope any of that made sense. 
all that to say, I, I like, I would say, mm, I'm going to cheat and include romantic suspense in suspense and put that there. <laughs> and I also read a lot of thrillers. Especially because a lot of them end up being more mysterious. Like the more mysterious thrillers I tend to like better. Um, oh, I like this. In a workshop from Library Reads, the host described it as suspense, what could happen, mystery, what happened, thriller, what is happening. Yeah, I think that that's helpful too. Um, but anyway, all that to say, Mystery Who Done It is my all time favorite. And I do really also enjoy suspense and thriller, but I'm pickier and have fewer things I like, if that makes sense. So. Good mystery wrecks with a strong romance. Um, the Naked in Death, or in Death series from J.D. Robb. Just saying. Nora Roberts in general would be where I would tell you to go. This is another good way to think about it. Um, I think of thrillers as being, or, uh, think of thrillers as being a realistic version of horror. The POV is being terrorized in some way. Yeah, like that's kind of what I think of too. Does gothic romance fall under suspense? Oh, it depends on if there's a supernatural element. I would think of that as either a historical romance or a paranormal romance usually. So. Um, okay. Narrative nonfiction. I'm gonna call that a really enjoy. Mm, yeah, really enjoy it because it is my favorite version of nonfiction. Um, narrative nonfiction being nonfiction that reads like fiction. It, it's so well written that it reads like a story. Um, it's not purely informative. It is trying to persuade or trying to, you know, tell you a story of some kind. So. And then soft sci-fi, I'm going to put in the like it category. Um, and again, I know there's this similarly with high and low fantasy, there's hard and soft sci-fi disputes about what that means. For me, I think of soft sci-fi as science-based speculative elements in a world that is still recognizably our own. So like often a dystopia, um, like if it's a contemporary, but there's some sort of like singular um, innovation or in invention that's sort of a conceit. Um, like for instance, and now this would be a romance, but uh, well, or no, no, no. Okay, I don't remember what this book is called, but there's a John Marr book where the conceit is that there is a version of match.com, like a dating site that uses your DNA to match you with somebody. I would think of that as like soft sci-fi because yes, it is um, technology based speculative element, but really it's still mostly our world. There's just like a singular thing or a couple of singular things that's making it, um, different than our world. So. So. Are there thrillers with a campy, lighter vibe? I like the fun of hunting down suspects, but the darker tone of thrillers are often off-putting. Ugh, thrillers with a lighter, campier vibe. I think you can get somewhat lighter tone in YA thrillers at times. Like, I think it's not tonally as dark, even if the things that are happening are dark. Um, so that might be a place to go cozy mysteries if you 
are okay with more of a mystery vibe than a thriller vibe. Recommendations for narrative nonfiction. Um, Michael Lewis and Eric Larson are the two that come to mind as like really, like they have a whole backlist of really good narrative nonfiction. Mary Roach, you could put in there. Um, a bit a popular one a couple years ago here on booktube was bad blood by john carrie rue that would be a great one if people are interested in the story of theranos um that's a great one i maybe that um catch and kill by ronan farrow yeah yep here's some racks Given the past few years, suspense thrillers and horrors, horror are all too much for me. Yeah, that's fair enough. What about sci fantasy? So I broke up SFF into four categories. I didn't include science fantasy, um, though there's plenty of that out there that is also good. The one, thank you for providing that. Uh, yeah, like tr a lot of well done travel writing is narrative nonfiction. Yeah, so like the Peter Mal, Mal, M A Y L E, I think is how you spell that. Um, Bill Bryson. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that like narrative biographies that are really well written and read like a story, I would count as narrative nonfiction where it's not purely just trying to like, you know, tell you about that person's life. Um, yes, I've not read Age of Miracles, but from what I know about it, yes, that's my understanding is that it would be soft sci-fi. Okay, here we go. Finlay Donovan is Killing It is a good campy thriller. Or Meddling Kids, maybe that one. That's by Edgar... I forget his last name, but it's like a take on kind of Scooby Doo. The Man Who Deciphered Linear B is a fascinating book. There you go. Be interested to hear your opinion on a book that was women's fiction with hard sci fi. Those are kind of, yeah, I don't know if you could get a book with both, but I don't know that it would be for me. Oh, this is a great one. Um, a Campy Murder Delight is an elderly lady's up to no good. Yeah, that's really fun. Yes, I would consider Julia, Julia Child's memoir. Well, I would consider that to be a memoir. But it is very, it reads like a story. And I love it. Um, okay, only two left. So Speculative Romance is my third all-time favorite. And in Speculative Romance, I include both science fiction romance and fantasy romance, but I would also include paranormal romance, which I love. Um, if I could only have one flavor of romance, it would be speculative um, because I tend to like the gender dynamics in those books better. And yeah, I really love character driven sci fi and fantasy. And I feel like having a romance kind of bakes the character drivenness into the, the equation. Um, so it is it is definitely my third all time favorite. And then the last one, I'm actually not sure why I broke this out. I don't know why I did this. I should have used this slot for a different subgenre. Say la vie. Um, I'm gonna put this occasionally, true crime. I do really enjoy true crime. Um, I can't read too much of it anymore. When I was younger, I feel like I read a lot more true crime, but uh, nowadays I tend to prefer my true crime as, um, you know, as told to me by ba Bailey Sarian while she does her makeup. Um, so I don't know, but I do really like, you know, uh, I'll Be Gone in the Dark is a great one. And then there's some like no visible bruises I would put on the line of being true crime because it's about domestic violence and it does kind of a deep dive into a couple of different cases. 
Um, so yeah, I would say it's a version of true crime, but not a, like, uh, yeah. Anyway, I do like true crime, but I think reading it as a book has gotten harder for me as, as I have aged and, uh, I tend to prefer it, you know, in a podcast or on YouTube. So yeah. So that's, that's my tiering. Much more evenly distributed than I thought it might be. Yeah, I remember when that book came out, Heather, it got great reviews. So I think, yeah, it sounds like it's a really good one. Um, yeah, I can understand that. I have to be in the right mind mindset. I tend to really like, um, the one, the things I can read true crime, I think tend to be more like historical true crimes. Like I really still enjoy reading that. Um, so where it feels a little bit more removed, like I've probably read five different books about Jack the Ripper. One, because it's so sensationalized, but also it just feels removed from my reality. So Yes, I agree. Um, yeah, blended with memoir. That's a good a good point. I don't like true crime because I don't want to read anything that could actually happen to me. Yeah, fair. Though I do feel like um, <laughs> loving uh, what was that um, Criminal Minds when I was a teen and in my early 20s taught me a lot of situational awareness. <laughs> like it made me much more suspicious of people and on guard. So that probably wasn't a, a too terrible of a thing. Um, with cozy mysteries, I would, I, they're not really thrilling. They're not really thrillers, but um, I mean, I think that they're close to that kind of vibe. What I've learned through this historical means I'm probably gonna be into it. Nice. You know, I think what I like about historical things tends to be that, again, I the one genre that I struggle with is anything that is truly set in the present that does not have some kind of fantastical or like fantasy-based mediation for me because the reality is like our current world i don't know i just don't necessarily want to read about it in fiction i'll read about it in nonfiction to like learn something new about it but it just feels like too much so when i'm reading something set in the past i feel like i can distance myself a little bit from it so i don't know any recs for paranormal romance oh my gosh um Lindsay Sands, Arjun Ovan. If you like, well, if you like Kate Daniels, my first recommendation for you would be to either read the other Alona Andrews series, most notably Hidden Legacy, or to try Nalini Singh. Um, and I would recommend Sci Changeling. Obviously, I'm doing a whole podcast on it. Uh, th those would be my immediate go tos. I would also recommend. Um, what else would I recommend? I like Lindsay Sands' Arjuno Vampire series. I like Janine Frost's Vampire series, uh, particularly her spinoff trilogies. Um, let's see here. Oh yeah, Heather's mentioning Thea Harrison's. Yeah, it's worth trying. It's a little more comedic, I think, but um, Why I've learned I need to give speculative romance a try because it's a hard sell for me, but I don't know why I haven't read much. Um, yeah, I mean, no, n nothing is for everyone, but I really like speculative romance a lot. There, it encompasses a lot of different types of books, which is probably part of why I enjoy it. Um, I guess I'll try one too. It's hard for me to believe that if Mara likes it this much, I'll hate re really hate reading it. I mean. You know, 
if you want to try some alien sci-fi romance, obviously I recommend Ruby Dixon. Uh, if you want to try some fantasy romance, I would recommend Radiance by Grace Draven or The Wolf and the Whale by Jordana Max Brodsky. Um, if you want to try Paranormal, I would recommend Kate Daniels. Yeah. So. Yeah. So anyway, that's my subgenre tier ranking. Um, and that was fun. Yay. So I'll I'll link to this tier list in case people who are watching on replay wanna wanna play along. Um, but yeah, it was fun. It was fun to chat it through to see what you guys thought. Um, and definitely let me know if you guys have any recommendations of other things we could rank together, because I think this is a fun format. I enjoy, I feel like it's nice and it's participatory for all of us. So I enjoy that. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's all I had. <laughs> I've forgotten how to end these things. Um, I'm going to try, I'm going to do my best to be back on next week, but I am trying to, um, be good about respecting my body's boundaries. So if I'm not feeling well, I will, I will bow out, but it's my plan to be back next week. And it was, I missed you guys. It was this fun, fun hanging out. So I'm glad. Oh, good. I mean, you want to try new things. Yeah. It's fun talking about, you know, new genres. Thanks, Joss. Um, but yeah, let me know, guys, let me know. Blah, 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 blah. Let me know if you guys have any thoughts about other things we could rank. Um, but yeah, thanks for hanging out with me. And I will hope to see you guys next week. Bye. <laughs>